206 turns of 28 gauge wire. So I'm, I'm trying an experiment here, uh, trying to fixture the uh, coil in here. What I've done in the past is I just pushed this down and I stuck some hot melt glue and, and held it in place until it cooled and went around. The problem with that is the glue sometimes uh, gets messy and you get lumps that, that stick up above and you can't, the magnets can't pass very closely over it because there's bumps. So I wanted to make sure that the coil was below the surface of this, this coil holder. And so the experiment is to use little holes. I don't know if you can see them, but I made little 1.2 millimeter diameter holes through here. I printed them, but they closed up in the printing, so I had to drill them out again. But anyhow, um, what I did was I, um, I put some thread through here and cinched the thread down to pull the coil in. However, I found that if I just have a single thread, um, the thread would break and I wasn't able to pull the coil uh, nice and tight. To solve that, what I ended up doing is doing a double pass so I'd have two threads and then pull down and that had enough tension to pull the coil down. And what I've been doing is just putting a drop of super glue in there and spritzing it with some alcohol. Alright, so where were we? Just a single pass, I believe. Let's go back up. Come back down. So before I tighten it, I just push on the coil, make sure it's good and seated. Pull that down good. Do a little half hitch action here. Okay, here's the coil before I potted an epoxy. I did use a little bit of hot melt to hold the, the wire in place. But um, it's ready to go. Looks pretty good. Okay, here's the, the base. I've got two 8mm bearings, 8mm shaft for it, or 100mm long, and a couple snap rings. So the bearing slides in here, and then the snap ring, the bevel is on the top side. It's just there because um, 3D printing doesn't do well with overhangs. So there's a snap ring in there. You can flip it over. This one is, just goes a little bit deeper and it's got its own snap ring. But the bevel, instead of being up like that, and now that the flat side is here. Okay, so I'm just going to slide that in. Snap it in place. There we go. Okay, so that bearing's retained in there. So here's the coil with the epoxy a little bit leaked through so the, the masking tape wasn't the best idea, but it wasn't hard. Okay, this wire comes through by this notch. So this gets screwed into place. I'll do that later. Then we've got um, the magnet plate attached to this flange here. The shaft goes in and there's an opening here. So there's an opening to the shaft. So when this pulley 
This is an inch and a half pulley with a half inch bore that slides on. This set screw will, will go through and impinge on the shaft. So there's the opening. Just tighten that up. Make sure it's getting there. Right, and then I just have the shaft so that it's flush at the top. And snug it down. So the set screw pinches on the shaft and then the rest of the pulley will be pinching on the plastic to make sure that that's the shaft is held in place and the flange is there. Then I just take the little spacer the bevel down and that goes on the bearings. And I gotta tighten up those screws in there. They just uh, attach to the magnets. All right, a quick electrical test. This is going to be AC. There's really no no polarity to this, even though I've got red and black wires. But first thing is to check the resistance. I intended for this to be 37.8 ohms, and it looks like it's 36.2, so we missed that a little bit. I've um, connected the generator to the oscilloscope. Give it a, a whirl. Give it a single sweep. And it looks like we've got 15.2 volts peak to peak at a frequency of 22.9 hertz. And this is a 9 pole generator. When designing the generator, I had a, a target of 0 0.04958 volts per RPM. And let's see the resistance, stator resistance of 37.8 ohms. And so those were the targets. The actual resistance I got was 36.2, so it's a little bit low. Then we just checked the um, generator on the oscilloscope, and I ran it once, and it was 15.2 volts peak to peak, not just the peak. And then it had a frequency of 22.9 hertz. I just spun it one more time and got 22.4 volts peak to peak with 33.8 hertz. So I just spun it a little faster. So the peak voltage is just half that. Um, we can convert from this frequency to RPM. Just take that frequency, which is cycles per second, convert it to cycles per minute, and then there's nine cycles in a revolution, so we divide by nine. And so we can calculate um, the peak, just half of those voltages, and then uh, use this for the RPM of the generator. And we get 0.04967 for the one, and then the second run, 0.04978. So we have um, an average of those two, 0.04973. So if the target was 0.04958, we were just up about 3.3 percent so that was that turned out to be really close the resistance 37.8 was the target 36.2 is actual so we're down about 4.2 percent on the resistance but overall i was quite happy with um with how that generator turned out and just adjust this nut until those pulleys are are even okay here's a round belt for this uh, pulley system. This is a little smaller diameter than a, what I'd like, but it's what I had on hand. So I, I wanted to see how many turns this has, or revolutions this makes for every revolution of the larger pulley. So here we go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. Oh boy, it's almost eight and a half. So um, this is going to have a pretty high RPM. Okay, what I've done in the electrical box here is I've removed the wires for the large turbine. So those are are just disconnected. It will just spin as fast as it wants, I guess. And then I brought in wires from this this one that generator 
Just brought those wires in and I'm just going to put them across one phase of the rectifier and charge controller. So that should uh, give us an indication if this thing produces any power. And we'll be able to measure the watts and the amperage right here. Okay, I've just snugged up this belt a little bit so that this will turn when that turns and uh, put a couple screws in the feet just to hold it in place. And then we'll wait for the wind. Getting tens of milliamps there. Not bad for just a little puff.